Hey there viewers, welcome back to another episode of Ray of All Trades. Next on the bench is a Briggs & Stratton 10,000 watt generator, 12,500 uh, surge or starting watts. Electric start, it works really good normally, but now it just won't start. We're leaning towards a uh, fuel supply problem. Odd part is he uses ethanol free gas all the time. Let's verify the complaint and then let's get it checked out. just slightly above the full mark that could be gasoline and it also could be previous uh, oil change it's got a little excessive it's got gas it smells pretty normal let's pull the choke on i imagine it has a start and stop switch somewhere for a spark yep so it has an ignition um run and a idle control off so the ignition's on run right now, and the idle control is off position, which should give us maximum RPMs if it starts. Is there a fuel supply hose? Let's look for that next. Make sure there's no shutoff valve. Yep, here's a uh, shutoff valve. I don't know which way is which. Let's see, fuel shutoff. Looks like it's counter. It's uh, clockwise to shut it off, so let's turn it on. Preliminaries, everything looks like it should fire right up. Let's see what it does. Not sure how well that showed up on video it's producing power it obviously starts it's surging so i suspect that the power head is probably in great shape obviously it's producing power it was uh, bouncing up and down a little bit so you saw that in the frequency more than anything else the rpms are a direct relation to the frequency it has to run at whatever the rpm is that was governed for that or how it was built to that power head to determine the frequency. So some are 3000, some are 3600. If a uh, 3600 maximum RPM governed motor is supposed to produce 60 Hertz, what happens is if it's running at, let's just hypothetical, say 3200 RPMs, it'll say that it's running at like 55 Hertz. We want this to run at 60 Hertz. We want that governor to maintain 60 Hertz. There's a couple things that can cause it. One of which the idle down solenoid. I don't think that's our problem because it's out of the circuit and it's an immediate problem. It really sounds and feels like a carburetor um, gummed up. Very likely the idle jet, but basically I'm gonna pull the carburetor off and we're gonna clean the entire thing. And then we'll determine what was actually causing it. But a generator motor, you don't want it to uh, bounce up and down like that. You don't want any motor to bounce up and down like that, but on a lawnmower, you really don't notice it so much because you're still cutting grass, right? Well, on a generator, you want clean power as clean as possible going to all of your appliances and everything else. So ideally you're looking for that governor to maintain the constant speed and everything else, which where the governor picks up speed and drops speed based on what the RPMs are. Um, so it adjusts the carburetor to set the RPMs to the desired speed of the motor, revolutions of the motor. Let's get the uh, carburetor off of this thing. All right, first things first, when you're, we're gonna be taking apart fuel systems, we don't want uh, a spark or anything like that, so let's go ahead and get the battery disconnected. Okay, and I've already shut the fuel supply off. We're going to disconnect the uh, spark plugs too. Let's start digging in and see what we can find. Air filter looks good, no mice nests. This carburetor and engine looks just like the video that we did on the, the six wheel Max. Okay, well I dropped my 10 millimeter down there so I'm definitely going in now. Let's go ahead and close the choke just to make sure I don't drop any bolts down there. Uh, 
All right, got all my parts back. All my parts, all my tools, got everything back. The way this carburetor is designed, to get the carburetor off, you pull off this cover and you pull off the entire intake manifold. Very likely we're gonna have to do that. Does this come out of the way so you guys can see better? Very likely we're gonna have to do that, but sometimes you can pull just the top of the carburetor off and get to all the jets. We're gonna give that a try first, because if that works, that'll save us a whole lot of time trying to get this apart. Because if you think about it, when we uh, go to do the rebuild, we're gonna be taking it apart anyway. So if for some reason you can find the problem at the top half on something like this, it, the bolts come from the bottom up on that manifold, so the only way to get to them is from underneath. But like I said, no matter what, we're taking, taking the top off, whether we pull the carburetor off from underneath, or we find something up top here. So I'm just trying to save myself a step if I can. Very careful taking this lid off that hopefully the gas gets loose. And it is, lucky for me. It's actually in really good shape. So we're gonna to wanna to clean out all these jets. And we wanna take a peek down inside here. Let's see, the float goes in there just like that. The needle came out. There's a little bit of dirt there, but not bad. There's my needle. And my needle has a bunch of junk on it. I don't know if y'all can see that. I'm trying to show you the light in the video, or excuse me, the light. You guys see that? It's really hard to tell. You can see that ring of dirt on here? Anyway, there's a bunch of dirt on the end of this. And then looking down inside the bowl. You guys see all that dirt down in there? And the uh, stained fuel, because his fuel wasn't, wasn't that color. So it's definitely stained. You can see the varnish starting to happen on it. See the yellow tinge? The varnish starting to happen on it. I think even though it's non-ethanol fuel, I think we're gonna uh, drain some of this anyway, just to make sure what we're getting from the supply. Not liking what I see in the carburetor. But hopefully we can get this thing clean without pulling the carburetor off, and that would be awesome. I'll wick up out of there. Let's see what we're starting with here. Yeah, you can see it's just it's, there's still a lot of dirt down inside there. Um, I'm gonna spray some cleaner, keep sopping it up. This is a four-stroke engine, so this carb cleaner, will, it'll actually run on that if it had to, so I'm not concerned about that. I'm going to keep sp spraying and sopping while we're at it. Let's go ahead and get that needle cleaned off of there. Yeah, you can see all that. I'm sure the camera's not in focus, as it never is when I want to show something. Anyhow... I'm just trying to get that uh, the crusties off of there. And we 
we also want to get those jets cleaned out. Speaking of jets, let's go ahead and get that one done too. Can't even see dirt coming out of this thing. All right, I'm gonna keep working on this. I'll bring you guys back when I think it's close. Got my welding tip cleaners. Let's just check all these passages real quick. Grab this fuel line with my van pliers. I anticipate I'm going to lose a little. Oh, I'll show you guys the uh, car. It became fairly clean. Gotta get the hose clamp off of there so I can fish the line out. Mine's a little bit on a rigid side. Okay. Let's drain a little and see what we get. Oh yeah, we got bad gas. You guys see that? It's also cloudy, so it's more than just the color. I've also, I'm looking at it as cloudy. Shut off my fuel supply here. Not only is it uh, a lot darker, I mean, fuel heck, has a dye to it, um, depending upon where you get it from. So, I mean, it's not the dye so much as I can see water in it. I can see, I can see it's cloudy and it does have a funny smell to it. It's not perfect. It's not terrible, but it's also not perfect. We're gonna let that go ahead and finish draining. I don't want this gas in there at all. I don't like it. Looks funny, has a funny smell to it. That's how the uh, carburetor came out. Not terrible. Um, a lot of it just cleaned right up. While that's draining, let's go ahead and get the carburetor put back together. I need to put this rod back through here. And just like that I've got pretty high hopes on this thing running like it's supposed to because uh, like I said we kind of identified the smoking gun found the problems put this back on while we're still here my dinner just arrived I'm gonna let this finish draining well, it looks like it just finished, but anyway, I'm gonna let, uh, make sure that there's nothing left in this tank. Yeah, it looks like we had about a half a gallon of bad gas, and uh, I'll catch you guys in the morning. Good morning, guys and girls. I let this thing try to drain overnight. I thought we had captured all of the uh, gasoline, but it appears that there's still gas down inside there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull these bolts, pull the tank off of it, and uh, get it setting up so I can get the rest of this gasoline out because whatever is in there is not healthy. I'll be back with you guys as soon as I got an empty tank. Okay, what I got out of there was some of the, uh, it was basically one gallon of the most pungent fuel you can imagine. When it got to the bottom of the tank, it smelled like turpentine, really bad. Let's go ahead and get that fuel line changed out. So when gas gets that bad, it starts deteriorating the fuel line pretty rapidly. So we're gonna throw some brand new quarter inch line on here. See if I can pull this loose. 
without pulling out that grommet. There's a rubber grommet that goes up into the bottom of this plastic tank. Should rotate that fuel line back and forth a few times. May have to cut the line. Let me go to the other side and we'll try to pull. There we go. Let's measure out a new piece of line. Give ourselves about a half inch extra. Run it back the same way it came. Let's run the fuel line. We'll pull a little bit extra for right now. go got the clamp on new fuel line more flexible Before I put this cover back on, this right here is your mixture screw. That way should be more fuel. This way should be more um, air. I might have that backwards. Anyway, when you're um, when it's running, you can turn this, and it's, it's actually got a stop on it, so it can't go any further than that. So the manufacturers determined that between these two points, you're not going to hurt anything, but you can adjust this or so fine tune it just to try to make it run a little bit better. Now we're done with the gasoline aspect of it. We can go ahead and plug in our spark plugs and hook up our battery. Take these things off. I put them on when I was messing with the gasoline. The easiest way is just don't touch the gas, which is what I was trying to do, but sometimes it splashes a little bit. So it's not the right gloves, but every little bit helps. All right, so nothing left to do but go grab some non-ethanol gas because we don't know when the next power outage is going to occur. Fill this thing up, start it, and see if it's fixed. Hope you all got something out of the video. Thanks for hanging out.